Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome. Today I'm going to talk a bit about serverless architectures. Well, uh, do a refresher on serverless architectures, um, given that there's been so many great talks already this week about them. And I'm also going to give you an introduction to the Apache Open Wisp project running on top of IBM Bluemix. So over the last few years, we've seen abstractions grow on top of uh, bare metal uh, towards containers, towards virtual machines, towards containers, and now functions. So these are allowing developers to focus more and more on the code, the business logic that's valuable to them, and less on the operational concerns. So we get the term serverless because their point of view is shifting away from what's running their code to just focusing on their code, the code itself. That and the code isn't always running, but we'll get back to that later. So the technical capabilities of these new platforms promise to help developers build well-designed cloud-native applications faster and more easily by offloading many of the operational focus concerns of the 12 factors, particularly around scaling, lifecycle management, and concurrency, which can quickly get out of hand when they go all in on microservices. And there's also um, several new types of workloads, uh, non HTTP workloads uh, that are common to microservices that are also looking for the benefits of cloud elasticity. And these workloads are a good fit for event-driven architectures because these serverless platforms can provide a support for different protocols besides HTTP. And they allow for asynchronous uh, interaction models. And at the business level, a new cost model is emerging that's letting them tie the code execution directly to the cloud resources that they're paying for. So this is where another aspect of the term serverless comes into play. The code isn't always running uh, while waiting for requests. And so while these architectures aren't a silver bullet, uh, there are dragons there, as Mike Roberts pointed out uh, yesterday, they do provide a new deployment option for lots of use cases. So how do you actually get started to develop and deploy a serverless architecture? Apache OpenWhisk, an open source project started by IBM about a year and a half ago, and in production on IBM Bluemix since December, uh, provides a platform for doing just that. It's flexible, it's extensible, and it integrates with a variety of internal and external event sources. So OpenWhisk offers the developer that person with that serverless point of view, a straightforward programming model based on packages, triggers, actions, and rules. Packages provide event feeds. Triggers fire when those event feeds uh, initiate an event. And developers map actions or functions to those triggers using rules. Anyone can create a new package for others to use, and developers can write their actions in any language. OpenWhisk has first-class support for JavaScript, Java, Python, and Swift, but any SDK can be packaged as a Docker image and run as an action. So behind the OpenWhisk curtain, there are servers, of course. Uh, it's a distributed system built on top of proven cloud-native open source software, including Nginx, Apache CouchDB, Console, Kafka, and Docker. You can run the platform using Vagrant on a workstation, or you can deploy it on-premises uh, on top of OpenStack, for example. You can get started building serverless applications with OpenWhisk by going to bluemix.net. Um, we provide an online editor and a workflow builder for doing the mapping of the, the triggers to the actions through the rules. There's debugging tools available, as well as an execution cost details visible online. And there's also a visual monitoring console above, uh, over and above the open source project. Uh, so you can go through your asynchronous actions and find out what the true response and requests were um, in the asynchronous model. Um, so if you want to start playing with deploying some serverless architectures, you can go to bluemix.net or explore the open source project itself at openwist.org. Uh, developers like myself are always willing to help. Uh, you can meet other community members through all the open uh, the social media channels. 
And uh, be sure to attend the OpenWIST Deep Dive later this afternoon for a demo and some best practices for developing serverless architectures. And um, I've already posted these slides on Twitter, uh, so you can download them um, by following me at Daniel Brooks. Thank you very much.